Hi everyone. Um, my name is Emily. Uh, welcome to Photos at Zoom. I am a graduate student at Columbia College and a curatorial intern at the Museum of Contemporary Photography. And today I will be your virtual docent while we talk about the maternal image um, in relationship to our new exhibition that will be opening on the 19th of January. Um, so today we're gonna talk about the kind of representation of pregnancy and the visual history of that and how photography has been used to both document these experiences, but also uh, lacks kind of full representation of all of these different kinds of experiences. So I wanna start off as well by addressing who is in these images we're about to talk about and kind of who is represented because a lot of the images we're about to talk about show cisgendered white women. And that is just kind of a, an aspect of the current collection, but it's something the museum is objectively always working on. And I wanted to talk about that also because this is not the only kind of body that can be pregnant, that can have a child. I think that's important to address that we, we know for a fact that not just cisgendered women have children, but in fact, a lot of different types of people are able to be pregnant, are able to have children biologically. And I think it's important to address that. And we will, in different parts of this presentation, talk about that, as well as the current exhibition is also going to be talking about that too. So to get started, I want to talk about um, this photograph by Melissa M. Penny titled Balloons. So the reason I chose this photograph to begin our presentation is I, one, am a fan of Penny's work, but also I'm so interested by this representation of these young girls performing and playing their gender roles. And, and that is something within Penny's work in a lot of different ways, but it's also just such an interesting societal and cultural element of, of living in the West, of, of living in a patriarchal society, living in a world that has gender roles. And so I think there's something about this photograph that is so both joyous and playful, but is also um, has this kind of like more complicated undertone to it. Um, so Melissa Ann Penny, to speak more about her work, she focuses a lot on kind of young girls or, or women, their kind of transition from, from childhood to girlhood to adulthood in this kind of um, manipulative space of, of kind of adolescence, of kind of learning who you are. A lot of her work centers around her daughter, Emma, with a series regarding Emma, but then there's also Girl Ascending, where she talks in general about kind of the female experience and, and girlhood. And I find this image to be such a, I mean, in general, also such a beautiful photograph with this light and this, this street and this kind of very, candid image of these two young girls pretending that they are pregnant. Um, I also enjoy that the title is called Balloons too. I like that the penny is giving us a little bit more or giving us this kind of hint at the fact that this is like a performance piece of, of these young girls playing. Um, this image is also kind of very different from what the rest of what we're gonna be talking about is. It actually doesn't have anyone that's pregnant in it. It doesn't have a child or like a, a baby in it. And, I think it's just an interesting way to start our conversation around um, pregnancy and around these kind of images. Um, as well, one thing I forgot to say when we started too, there's a Q&A section in the presentation and also a chat if you have any questions that you wanna talk about. Um, but I was thinking towards the end of the presentation, we can like go over a lot of the work and then talk more about it together. Um, but if there's anything that pops out to you or anything you wanna like address later, please put it in the chat and we can, we can talk more about it. So to move from Penny's work and, and starting out at this kind of more childlike understanding of pregnancy or this more kind of performative connection to this like gendered experience, um, I wanna move to this, we're gonna talk about Dorothea Lange. Um, and this image is in our collection, but is a different edited version of it. The image that I have here, this is from the Library of Congress um, website. So if you look on our website, it's gonna be very different. Um, it's slightly darker and the crop is slightly different. 
which I think is interesting to address or important to address when we talk about Lang's work because editing is kind of an important element or kind of the, the way in which she manipulates her images and, and plays with that and you can see that in her collection of, of her work. But I want to talk about this photograph because I, I find it such a, hey, this really beautiful and really striking portrait of someone who is also, who's pregnant, but is also not, her pose and her gesture, I think it's so important. Like that she is not kind of standing or standing up straight with her like belly out with any kind of as well, like joy or, or celebration. Instead, it feels very matter of fact. And I'm sure that has to do with the situation in which this person is in. I think this is from the FSA work. So we're kind of in this very complicated time period in America. And then we have this kind of, um, interaction happening between the subject and the photographer in this kind of deeper context. Um, when we as well, one thing to address for the rest of our presentation, and we didn't talk about it in the first one because it doesn't really happen, but in, in this image, we have eye contact, we have gaze. And when we talk about portraiture and we talk about um, what happens when a photographer takes a photograph of another person, the gesture and the, and the gaze are kind of the two most important things that we kind of unpack and look at. Um, so in, in, in portraiture in general, but we'll talk about it using this image specifically, when a subject is looking at the camera, they are then in turn looking at us, the subject, right? They are making, like this person is making direct eye contact with us. She's looking at us, even though in the moment she's technically looking at Lang and her camera. Um, and so then from there, we get to kind of we're making eye contact with her. We have this, this like agency and this like unrelenting gaze that she is giving us, that she is making direct eye contact with us and is not looking away and is not uncomfortable or vulnerable. And her pose also represents that. Um, the only thing I think that would maybe represent some form of vulnerability is this kind of arm here, um, kind of like shielding her, her stomach. But outside of that, like she is looking at us. She also is not afraid of us or uncomfortable. And I think that that's just like such a interesting element within this portrait of a pregnant person and in general within this portrait um, and kind of highlights this too. When we talk about portraiture, the, the significance of the gaze because of the fact that the photographer exclusively um, when making a portrait has the power, right? Or when making an image in general, the photographer is the person with the power. They are framing the situation, framing the space. They are making this image, right? So when we take a portrait of someone, it's important to recognize that kind of power balance and that the subject still needs to have and hold agency um, and, and kind of be able to present themselves, especially when we look at like, the visual history of, of women being represented in photography. Um, so I think that this is like a good example of, of that kind of interaction and this kind of gaze and this kind of like very directness of the subject. Um, so I just, I think that this is like a really interesting lying photograph and she has a lot of portraits of, of women and, and of pregnant people. And I think that um, there's something really interesting about her as a woman in this FSA space, like her going and, and engaging with other women specifically to make work about them um, and talk about them and give a real visual history to them. Also because of the fact too, that she is like a woman and is able to engage in these spaces in the way that a cisgendered male photographer would probably not be able to do that. Um, so I just think that that's like a really interesting element within like Lang's work and Lang's history within the like visual iconography of America. So to move as well from Lang to another Lang, I mean, I can't not, I can't talk about her and not talk about my grandmother. Um, that feels kind of blasphemous. And I specifically want to talk about this though within the lens of Madonna and Child and that like visual iconography. So I'm gonna move to the next slide really quickly. This piece is very much not in our collection, but it is kind of a very um, iconic image of Madonna and Child. And for those of us who have seen Christian imagery of the mother Mary and baby Jesus, like we are familiar with this kind of pose and this gesture of a mother holding a child. And it became like a very 
important motif within painting and then in turn an important motif within general like visual history and photography. So I bring that up because that is an element of why this photograph became so important, right? Like this is, we think about the Dust Bowl, we think about FSA, we think about this time period in America in this kind of intense poverty and this intense environmental destruction, we think about this image, right? And so Lang, Lang kind of, um, I mean, you know, we're aware that Lang manipulated this kind of set and this, these people and, and made them pose in this kind of way. And she, she kind of references this visual image, right? This image of Madonna and Child to kind of connect to this deeper visual history, right? Like that's why people find this image so striking or so important is because it references something that they're so familiar with and, and so kind of used to seeing, we think about motherhood, we think about, we think about like the maternal image, right? When we think about that term in the broader sense, we think about like Madonna and child when we're looking through a westernized art view. So like looking kind of right in here kind of mother holding her child. So to go off of talking about that, I want to then talk about this Andy Warhol photograph. Um, because if we're talking about Madonna and Child, we're talking about that visual imagery, this is a photograph that also represents that. But in a way that is so different, so different from Margaret Mother and so different from, from other versions of this kind of uh, gesture or this posing, and we have this like, was, okay. when we look at images and we look at photography and we do print viewings in real life, what we do is we break down what we're looking at, right? We break down kind of what is in the image so the image can explain to us what it's trying to say. And so to break this image down into kind of its two or three fundamental parts, we have this, we have this mother, we have this baby, and then we have this kind of like fabric, right? It feels like its own kind of different element. Um, so we have, we look at this mother, we have this very glamorous, very traditionally feminine, very, um, very Warhol-esque in the representation of femininity, right? With this makeup, this hair. Um, and then we have her breastfeeding and cradling this child in this gesture right here that is so contorted and uncomfortable and and very different from how we think about like a maternal hold or if we want to break down into like a very traditional gendered idea of that, um, this is something that doesn't look like that. And I, and I find it so interesting, this kind of, this baby kind of contorted and, and pressing into kind of the arms of their mother as she is like not really holding the baby in a way that you would. Also, we think about gaze, we think about posture, we think about all of that. She is not looking at the camera. She does not care about us. She's also not looking at the child. She is busy kind of looking at other things, being in a different space. And there's something that's really kind of complicated about that or makes the image more complicated um, through her like disinterest of us, the viewer and her disinterest of child and her kind of focus on whatever the third person is within the space, right? So, I just think, I also am unaware of what Warhol's like intent with this photograph is or what he was trying to say when he talked to, like when he made this photograph. But I, I don't know, I find it such a different representation of motherhood um, in a very also, I don't know, a very kind of, when we think about also like a male photographer making this image too, like that is also the thing that we haven't really talked about yet. When a photographer is in a space, they are physically changing the, the environment, right? They are physically like changing the space by being there with a camera. And so by having like this, this photographer in this space at also in the 1980s, a very well-known photographer, artists in general, like the way that, that he is then taking up space and then like the space that, that she is existing within is this like really interesting, um, tension, I feel like, that is probably happening in the actual like, creation of this image, right? And then you can kind of feel that tension within the image and within this like juxtaposition of her and child, as well in this very like stark and empty space. Um, 
we're like not in like their intimate environment as well. And she's wearing, she's covered in this like very thick woolen fabric also, which I think is interesting. This like heaviness of material, like her whole lower half from like the baby down is just like weighted through the material, through the child, through that gesture right there. Um, I think it's just like such a different photograph of, of breastfeeding in general and, and motherhood. So we're gonna move from Andy Warhol to this Emmett Gowan photograph, which is probably one of my favorite pieces in the collection. It is such a striking and like complicated photograph. Um, so Emmett Gowan is very well known for, for his work, photographing his family and his wife and, and his children and, and um, was taught under Harry Callahan. So was very inspired by that kind of general practice. Um, and, and his work, his work is very much about domesticity and intimacy and, and family. And he, he used photography as a way to record that and record intimacy. And although this photograph isn't of a family member, it still has that same kind of intimacy to it or, or being in like a vulnerable space. Um, because when we, I want to also, is it, the main thing I want to talk about with this photograph too is the, the kind of visual history of pregnancy and of birth specifically. We don't have a lot of images of people giving birth. And, and that comes from like in the general visual history of humanity. And that comes from one place that is the photographer was most likely going to be the father or the, the male person within, within this family dynamic, but, but they weren't allowed in the room when, when someone was giving birth, they weren't allowed to be in that space. And so therefore there's this like removal of this record of what the birth itself was like. We're gonna talk more about this later when we talk about artists that are in the exhibition. Um, but it's just, that kind of like lack of history is so kind of saddening, but also interesting in this not allowing a photographer in that space means that we don't have that and we don't really get to see that as much. Um, so instead we have images like this Emma Gowan photograph, which is like directly after birth, directly after that we, we get to see this mother and her child um, in kind of the hospital in this very like complicated, like we see all these kind of medical equipment, we see all of these sheets, we see this other person and we kind of, we get like more of a context of the space that we're in, but also a understanding of, of kind of what the environment of someone giving birth in a hospital like is and feels like. Um, so then to break down what we're actually looking at, when we look at this photograph and what some of my favorite elements in this photograph are, is one quite obviously the the eye contact that the, the mother is making with the photographer and how she is so unrelenting and so also like unfazed. I feel like her, her eye contact is that she is completely um, not that interested in us and kind of also this relief, right? Because again, this is directly after um, she's given birth to her child. And so she is, kind of looking at us with this, this relaxation, this relief, but then also this kind of confidence or, or agency. And maybe that comes through the eye contact in general, or maybe that comes through her specifically, but her kind of deadpan staring at the camera, staring directly at us and like unflinching in that, I think is, is something about this image that's so powerful. And especially within the context of just giving birth um, and just having a child. And then the other element of this photograph is that I love is this baby right here. And like the way the child is being held by this also like cut off figure too. Like we have just this body presenting this child to us who's like crying and, and also like looking or facing the camera directly too, right? Like both the mother and the child are looking or, or facing us when we look at this photograph and, and that gives such a feeling of like being in the space or being in the environment, um, which I find so striking about this image. Um, as well, just this kind of 
there's just like intimacy like I think that that's something that comes up with a lot of this work is is the intimacy of like being in this actual physical space and and if Emin Gowan doesn't really know this this subject very well and it's just like in this space I think that that is so interesting and so kind of I don't know, something that's interesting about photography or interesting about kind of the, the need to record and the need to have a history like that and be able to and be allowed into an intimate space. Um, I just find really interesting. So we're gonna move from this piece to a piece by Dana Lawson that is not in the collection, but is um, something I want to talk about to then talk about a piece that we just acquired. So we're going to talk about Dana Lawson for a little bit and how phenomenal her photography is, specifically this photograph and how it is such a beautiful example of what Dina Lawson is trying to say when she when she makes her work. Um, although it is such a different kind of image than the other ones, her work traditionally or, or a motif she uses a lot is having her subjects in like a intimate private space and then it's kind of like a portrait of them usually full-bodied looking at the camera in some kind of way um, which is the next image we'll talk about but this Dina Lawson piece is again we talk about intimacy we talk about where we are when we look at this image like we're in a hospital we're again with a mother who's just given birth and we are given this like very private like this this look into something that is very private right and so Dina Lawson's work in general is very much talking about the African diaspora and is talking about Black experiences and Black lives and specifically talking about mundane spaces or um, experiences that are then like made beautiful. And that's what she's trying to do is like elevate this kind of normal domestic experiences um, into something larger and more grander that she's using her, like her subjects are facilitating or being these kind of vessels for that, um, to talk about how experiences for Black people are like that, that they are elevated, that they are um, this, in this important photographic record. And so this image, I think, hits all of those points, but then also gives us a kind of side talking point, which is when we talk about visual history of pregnancy, we talk about who we get to see and who as well had access to cameras and who was allowed in different spaces. We also know that like a lot of those images are of white bodies and we don't see black people or other people of color in that visual history. And so I think this image is so important because of that, and because it gives us this like very vulnerable, very raw moment of an experience that we don't really get to see that often. And then the importance of being able to see that experience and see this, this like really tender, and again, the same, like this right here, this relief and this tender kind of gesture. And then we have this child like presenting, like being presented to the world in the same way, kind of with Emma Gowan's photograph, but in a very different way. Um, it's just like such a striking photograph in all of those ways and, and, and holds the significance of, of having like a visual history of pregnancy and the importance of that. Um, I think I also, something about this image that is important to address too, when we, another side talking point of pregnancy and representation of that is when we watch movies or television, like the baby is usually clean and and like not covered in, in kind of any of the normal things that would be covered in after just, after just being brought into the world. And so I think like that is an important element within this work and an important element within images of pregnancy because that lack of visual representation just means that some people may not understand what pregnancy will look like and what it actually is and, and what their experience is going to be. And so I think that that images like this that are so raw and vulnerable and honest I think hold a lot of significance. Um, so we're going to move on to the other Lawson piece. So this has now just been acquired into our collection and we, we get to kind of see another example of Lawson's work. And so how, so when I was talking about before, like these intimate spaces, right, where she makes these portraits and she photographs people, this is then another like this is kind of more what a Dina Lawson photograph looks like 
Um, and what I love about her work or what is an important element within her work is that these, these figures, these subjects are in like an intimate space that is like tightly framed or that we aren't given like a huge big expanding room, right? The frame is kind of pretty tight on this subject and all the doors are closed and the space is kind of confined, but at no point does the subject feel vulnerable or confined. At no point did they feel like they are not an active member within this like photographic transaction, right? That they are not like the subject who we are meant to kind of bask in the glory of. Like that is kind of Dana Lawson's work is, is giving these people that she knows and that she needs this space to be this kind of elevated version of themselves and this part of themselves to like kind of flourish. Um, which I think is just like in the last image, but also in a lot of like in this image and a lot of Lawson's work, like she is creating this environment that that is just like so striking and so open and and allows these subjects to to perform. Um, which I just like, think is really important and beautiful. Um, as well, like this photograph, like we look at color palette, like that's something we haven't really talked about today. And a lot of the images we've looked at so far are black and white, but we haven't talked about like color and composition and all these other elements that make these images so strong and make them so more like interesting or complicated or, or, or photographs that, that we want to also look at outside of what they're like widely talking about. Um, so we're going to move to, from Dina Lawson to Cindy Sherman, and we're going to talk about her representation of femininity. So I'm sure a lot of us know who Cindy Sherman is because she is so iconic in her representation of, of femininity and, and womanhood. Um, but this, this body of work, like this image in particular, but kind of all of her work, especially in the 90s, was very much like exploring gender roles and gender expectations and what is womanhood and what does it mean to look like a woman and be a woman within like a patriarchal phase, within femininity, within feminism, like what what is a woman, what makes up one? And so Cindy Sherman used herself to transform and, and perform all these different representations of, of women. Um, so we have this, this piece untitled Cosmo Cover Girl, which one thing while doing research for this presentation, I came to realize this image came out kind of roughly around the same time that the Demi Moore um, Vanity Fair cover came out, which to talk about that image as like a quick side note was such a significant moment in visual history because that was like one of the few times we ever saw a pregnant body in the West, um, just like so kind of open and, and and exposed and, and kind of, I mean, it was kind of the first time that was on a cover of a magazine. And that was such a significant moment because prior to that, the the representation of, of people being pregnant was like not, it was almost non-existent. Like it wasn't until the 1950s with, with shows like the Flintstones and shows like I Love Lucy, where we actually got to see a pregnant person on on television. Like it wasn't until then that we'd ever even seen that in the West. And, and so to then go from that to a few decades later to a woman on the cover of a magazine, kind of just, just naked and pregnant. And I, and that became like such a pivotal like, turning point, I think. And so I find it interesting that this image that Sherman is doing like came out kind of around the same time and feels also very much connected to the time period and the kind of visual um, representation of femininity in kind of the early 90s. And we have, like, when we look at this image too, we have this, this woman with this, like, very intense makeup and this very intense gaze who's looking at us and has, like, this, this kind of massive hair um, and is in this, like, wet shirt that's clinging to her body. And, like, the longer that we look at it and the more we kind of stare at her like body itself we kind of realize that this is right here right here we realize that she's wearing a fake like pregnancy chest right like she's she's wearing a fake belly and fake breasts and she is pretending but not in a way too that she's trying to hide that she's pretending which i find really interesting that she is not trying to 
um, pretend that she doesn't pretend that she is pregnant or pretend that she's trying to do that and, and instead double down on her performance of femininity and performance of that. Um, again, with this very like striking makeup and this very like intent, like it, it feels like an image of, of a pregnant woman that's just been like dialed all the way up to a hundred and has become this like exaggerated performance, which is what Sherman's doing. Like we think about the image we looked at earlier with Melissa and Penny and that childlike performance by putting balloons under under their shirts to pretend that they're pregnant to now this as like an adult woman performing um, and presenting this, this like image of, of, a, of a pregnant person. We also as well, we think about the space that we're into. It looks like we're in like a very blank environment with these kind of rips. So it might, this kind of looks like it might be a photo studio or something like that. Um, which is just kind of an interesting thing too. We think about like the environment of which these images are being made in, right? We haven't looked at like too many that are in exclusively like private intimate spaces, which seems like counter to what we think we would just exclusively be seeing when we talk about pregnancy. So I find that interesting of how, how these um, artists are trying to I don't know, use space, use environment to kind of perform or pretend or, or, or kind of show all these different spaces that, that pregnant people exist within or can exist with them. Um, so we're going to move from Sherman over to Jess Dugan. So when I was talking earlier, when we were talking about queer representation, or we were talking about like a lot of the images we were going to look at were going to be cisgendered women. Now we are getting to talk about kind of queer representation within pregnancy and, and thinking about trans men having children and, and the importance of that visual record also existing. Um, this is, this is um, a piece called Kana Pregnant, which I just love the kind of very matter of fact way that that title is made. Uh, the Kana is pregnant or, or Kana has become pregnant or whatever Kana pregnant kind of fact, which I like. Um, and we're given this very tender portrait of someone who is pregnant. I feel like this this image feels slightly different from what we've kind of looked at. And we have like my two favorite elements within this piece is, I mean, I guess it's one element in two different ways is these hand gestures and this kind of like gentle, tender holding of his own belly. And then also this kind of gesture that is, feels, feels very different, feels um, I don't know, slightly more masculine or maybe just slightly less how we would like assume that he, that he would be posing with his, his belly in the way of like, we think about paternity photographs and we think about when, when people take those images to show their families, like it's these very as well hyper-feminine and hyper-tender images of like someone holding their own belly. And I just like that he has his like thumb tucked into his waistband and is still like being himself while he's getting his portrait taken. Um, it's also as well, I mean, Jess Dugan's work in general, for those of you who aren't familiar, their work is very much about queerness and about queer experiences and it's about kind of the different way that gender functions and, and how we perform it and how we manipulate it and how we exist inside of it. And this work, this image is from a one of Dugan's earlier bodies of work where they were specifically photographing like queer people that they knew um, and like taught like with other artists and with other people and, and kind of using this as like a, another record, right? Like I've talked a lot about that today, about representation, about record, um, which is just a very important thing within, within photography, within like what photography is as a medium. And, and so the like Dugan's work is all about that, specifically through like a queer lens. And so this, this portrait of, of kind of like falls into this important, um, history of, of queer representation, right? Something else I love about this portrait too, again, like a lot of the images we looked at have a lot of eye contact, which I just in general really appreciate within portraiture. And I think it's so interesting when we look at these images of pregnant people, right? 
we have this like very direct eye contact, but there's something a lot softer about the eye contact he's making with us and than the other people we've seen. And there's this like intimacy or again, like thinking about the space in which the photographer is making to make this portrait, we see this like very, I don't know, tenderness and this kind of um, relaxed kind of space that they're in, right? Connor is like very comfortable. He's in no way like hiding himself or hiding who he is, but is instead like looking at us and isn't like straight directly facing us, but is like making eye contact with us and is, is, is showing his pregnant belly and is, is like having this interaction with us that is slightly different than maybe the Emma Gowan piece we looked at where, where that woman was making like direct piercing eye contact with us and in a very like confrontational kind of way, whereas like we have this like tender gaze that, that Connor is giving us. Um, probably very much because of the space that Dugan is making and because of, of that general relationship. Um, I always find it interesting when looking at portraiture to think about what the relationship between the photographer and the subject is and what that has to look like or be for a photograph to look this way. Because you can't really, it, I mean, unless you have a crazy photographic gift, I think it's very hard to make people be vulnerable in front of the camera and make them feel comfortable. And so, you see like Dugan is is a great example of that and Lawson is a great example of that like just thinking about the spaces in which a photographer makes while they're making an image it's like really interesting it isn't interesting when we talk about portraiture specifically um so we're gonna go from Dugan to then this Barbara Morgan piece which is a piece that I had not seen before and when was making this presentation was so kind of struck by for like a number of different reasons one being that who Barbara Morgan is as a photographer, her work was exclusively about like dancers or like her work that she was most well known for was about dancers and, and performance and um, and this kind of, a lot about gesture and body and material and, and movement. Um, and this image is not, is not that in a lot of different ways. And the other, the other main striking thing about this image for me is the cropping of the body in this very like harsh way. So when we look at kind of the framing of a photograph, especially when we look at a body, like this, this here is all cut off, right? And like a very kind of, I don't think gruesome is the right word, but I think like a very um, sharp or, or, or striking kind of way of like having like the legs be mostly gone, the head be gone, the arms be gone, like we are, changing this this person from like a person into maybe more of a I don't think object is also the right word but instead kind of turns into this subject that's more about like shape and light and form which which fits into what Morgan's work is but we kind of see this very different um, representation of like the body and it's a very important thing to look at when you look at images of human beings and images of bodies, like what the action of cropping is doing or framing is doing. Um, because we now have no identity on this person. We have no knowledge of who they are or, or what they look like or, or how they would tell us who they are through, through a portrait of them. Because that's kind of a, an element of portraiture is that the subject is, is telling you who they are through the image and, and how they've been photographed. Um, as well like through the lens of the photographer too. So it's kind of the photographer and the subject kind of telling you who the subject is. Whereas we don't have that in Morgan's piece. We don't even have a name on this person. The title of his work is just pregnant. And so instead, like unlike the previous piece, we had Connor pregnant, like we had a person in their name and we got to see that full person. And then we got to have their identifiers that they are pregnant. Whereas this is, we are just kind of thinking about like, a body that is pregnant that isn't like a uh, an attached to an identity or, or a human being and we can make assumptions on like the race of this person I guess and 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 we can make gendered expectations of what this person's identity might be but, but these aren't facts or things that we actually concretely know so we're given this like really vague space to exist with them when we look at this photograph and kind of try and figure out what 
I guess figure out like what it is about this subject that this photographer is so drawn to. And it, it fundamentally breaks down into this, this body and this light on this body. And again, in this like studio space, we have like this gorgeous light and this gorgeous light. And we just get to see where it's like picking up different parts of the body. And, and like we have you know, like this beautiful dark zone right here. We, we get to see like shape and form and like the neck too is really gorgeous. And so it becomes more about the, the physicality of, of all the, the shape and the form of a pregnant person rather than like a person who is pregnant. Um, and this just feels like such a different image than what we've looked at and we're gonna keep looking at. Um, I just find it really interesting. So we're gonna move from that then to Eleanor Carucci, who is an artist within the show. Um, and I'm gonna talk about one of her pieces in a second. Um, but this work is very, a very Carucci photograph, I feel like, in the way that she is and has always been so vulnerable and so candid and so honest in front of the camera and does not hold back, hold herself back in any way. All of her bodies of work, of uh, autobiographical or self-portraits of her and her family, and she, she does not, like, have any um, kind of, I don't know, she's not shy in front of the camera, not shy about what she's telling us or showing us. And this photograph is an example of that. Showing my parents my pregnancy is such a beautiful, intimate and kind of bizarre kind of um, space or, or uh, event that she's documenting, right? Like this is not something that everyone who has been pregnant has done and, and not something that, that we think about when we think about a pregnant body or someone who is pregnant being like, I'm gonna show myself to my family, to my parents in this very vulnerable way. Um, and we have this like really, one thing that, that I enjoy a lot about this photograph too is we look at where everyone is looking. Like we have Eleanor kind of looking at like this part of her mother, right? And her mother like looking at her belly and then her father like looking at her face and so we see this like, this interaction that's happening between these three people who are not looking at us, who do not care that we are in the room, who are not acknowledging the camera, right? And they're instead having this very private interaction with one another um, and are kind of, kind of like navigating this, this kind of um, different experience of, of seeing their child pregnant and, and showing on the she's showing her pregnant body to a family. I just it's like such a intimate image and as well like talk about too I mean the way Eleanor Cruz uses light is something that that is very inspiring and very beautiful and like we have this gorgeous bright overexposed light like beaming in through the windows as it like silhouettes or like Backlit, backlights her and then also kind of backlights her mother and, and gets her father's face as well. But it's just like this like white void of there's like no outside world. And we are instead like in this intimate space with them inside that home. I find it just like so striking um, as well too. When we look at all the images we've looked at, like this is the one, and maybe Melissa and Penny's piece also feels like that, but this is one that feels the least kind of staged or the least kind of, even though it might very easily be a stage photograph, like it's not a formal portrait, like when we looked at Dugan's work or we looked at Sherman's work or um, Lawson's work, like this isn't like a formal portrait, instead more of like a slightly more vernacular or like candid image, um, which I just like think is really interesting and also kind of surprising that, that we're talking about this so late in the presentation, right? Like we're that I think when we think about preg pregnancy images, we think about like our own family archive. Um, and, and for Eleanor Carucci, I think a lot of her work functions in that way. So the next image we're gonna talk about is a piece that's in the show. So we get a little fun preview. Um, and this is called My Uterus. And so this is from when Eleanor Carucci had an operation to remove her uterus. And this was like a very striking again very matter of fact very honest very candid image of that um in all of its fleshy gory glory like it is 
such a visceral image, right? Like I'm sure it's giving a lot of visceral reactions to a lot of people. It happened to me the first time I saw this photograph, but there's something so, I don't know, beautiful about the fact that she made this image and has this record of her own body and, and has this, this kind of like different representation of her herself and her, her journey with pregnancy. And this is like towards the end of, um, towards the, I feel like this is, this is like a very, well, it's from 2015, so it's kind of a more recent work. Um, and so she, she's kind of like been documenting her life on stages for a long time, it has a lot of work of her children, and then has this piece to kind of talk about this new transition of, of her life. Um, I just, I think also the way she's using color, I also don't know how she even made this photograph, or how she was allowed to make this photograph. Um, or if she like was able to take her uterus home with her. Um, but just like that, like bright bodily red against this like very medical blue. Um, because it's just like a really striking thing. And again, think about form and shape, like when you're looking at um, Morgan's piece of just like a pregnant body, like when you see a uterus just as a shape and form. Um, she's just like, really interesting and, and this body of work and then this piece and other book pieces from this body of work are like going to be an out show and kind of just Karuchi's inherent want and, and ability to be so vulnerable with with the world within her subject matter like I think is is a really striking thing especially under the umbrella that is pregnancy or umbrella that is womanhood um, which I really enjoy. I'm gonna go to then from that to a Kelly Connell photograph. Um, and kind of the only other image we can talk about that is like a queer representation of, of pregnancy. And in my in the last presentation I gave in March or April of last year, I talked about Connell's work. Um, and I want to go over some of the key elements in her work again in the way that she uses subjects and the way she uses her model, who is a model she's been working with for 20 years, I'd say now, maybe even more, um, Kiba and their kind of like relationship as subject and photographer that has kind of like evolved over time. And specifically, one of my favorite elements within Connell's book is that all of these images of Kiba are actually self-portraits of Connell, of the photographer. She is using the subject, this model, as a vessel for her own self. And to then play around with, with gender and with sexuality and with, with her key life moments. And this image is a kind of, I don't know, like an important point within the, one, the general story of this body of work, but then also within the relationship of, of the model Kiba and the photographer Connell. Because there's other images of um, Kiba being pregnant, of the model being pregnant because she, she was pregnant in real life and, and Connell made work of that and then kind of removed that later on from the body of work because it felt not so much about Connell's story and not so much about what this, this body of work is about. It's not necessarily about this person like being a mother or, or motherhood in such a way or that it became like kind of a different story through that. So, which I just find so interesting about like using a, a model, using a, a, someone you collaborate with for a long period of time. You kind of, I don't know, you are, are affected by their life and their life experience in this kind of relationship that again, we're talking about subject and photographer relationship. Like this is a long-term friendship and professional relationship that, has kind of seen many transitions of both the artist and the model's life. And I, I find that really interesting. Um, but then to talk about this image specifically, like this is such a iconic event within the, the story that is pregnancy, that the, this is such a pivotal moment within that. And you get to see, I feel like when we see representation of pregnancy or someone discovering they're pregnant, like we see this. We don't necessarily see this with two women. We don't necessarily see this in like a queer relationship dynamic. If we would see this, I feel like in mainstream Western media, it would probably be a friend and her best friend, right? Um, instead of like a romantic partnership who is having a child. Um, 
and going through that like beginning journey. So finding this image like really important for that as well. It's another image that we're in the intimate space for, right? We're in someone's bathroom while they do this very intimate thing. And again, like when we're talking about with Kuruchi's work with the my pregnant, showing her pregnant body to her family, we have, we have again like two subjects who don't even notice that we're there. And I always find that so interesting looking at a photograph when the subjects don't even really know that we're around or even care that we are, we are in the space kind of thing. They are too busy and we just get to be like a witness to that. Um, we just find, find striking and just like something that is interesting about photography and its relationship to reality and, and to document that, that when a painting is like this, I don't think that we hit up against that as much as when we look at a photograph because we can really see ourselves within that space because we've been in an environment like this or we've been in a scene like this so we can imagine being in a scene like this more so than if this was a painting of that. We'll move on to um, Angela Kelly's work. I, mean, I have a few pieces of hers I wanna show. I also think we are slowly running out of time so I'm gonna pick it up a little bit. Um, but Angela Kelly's work was this body of work in particular as part of the Changing Chicago series, which is a really important work in the 1980s about Chicago and like different elements of the, the city and the, the communities like evolving and changing. And so this work is the three images I'm gonna show are all about Tammy um, and Tammy's pregnancy. So this is her baby shower. And I love this image for how, again, like we're in an intimate space, the subjects don't mind that we're there, but also this is just like such a, an image that you would see in a family photo album. Um, and there's just this really like, I don't know, uh, mundane feeling to it in, in the most beautiful way possible. Like it is interesting because of how mundane it is and because we are watching this like group of people like stare off at something else at this like family event in the backyard. Um, I think that that's it's really interesting in a lot of this work. So then the other pieces by Kelly, this is Tammy and her son, Sean. And I enjoy this image so much for this like playfulness of motherhood and this playfulness of like, this like very intimate experience that these two are having together that, that the, the photographer gets to document. Um, and I wanna talk about this image in particular just because it's so bizarre and beautiful and the title is fantastic like Tammy showing off her son Sean in this like upside down acrobatic kind of playful thing that the two of them are doing and I think it's such a a important image to talk about or like images that look like this because it feels so mundane and, and normal and and playful and what like parenting is in a lot of ways too of this kind of um relationship with your child that is intimate that is that is fun that is that is unique and and also again when we look at this work we think about Kelly within the space and and her um her getting to like be with with this subject as they be vulnerable and they be they be intimate and honest with her and and I just I think that's always so interesting I think when you look at images like this that are so vulnerable and and like a, or a vernacular, like candid image, you get to kind of see, get to kind of see or think about like what it means for someone to be in that space with a camera. Um, I just always think it's interesting. I'm gonna skip over to ah, this photograph by Tom Ardent, which I wanted to put in, the, in this presentation because I one think that this is just such a sweet and, and kind of beautiful like street photograph, but I also wanted to bring it up because it is street photography and we haven't like looked at a lot of that so far and I think that that's an important element of seeing the the kind of way like the spaces that someone with their child is you know that they exist within like a public space on the bus you get to see this you get to see this document of that and and it is also very different from what we've looked at when we talk about like intimacy or like private spaces right this is a very public space and we had given this like very sweet interaction between the child and the mother and kind of how they are like embracing one another. Um, 
and as well, like, again, the mundaneness of this image of like, we've seen this in real life a, a million times. And I, I think that having like a document of that is so interesting and important. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, yeah, we're gonna we just have been talking for a minute. So I really gotta move on to the other photographs because I have this piece by Harry Callahan um, that I wanted to talk about. And there's another piece that's following it by Ken Josephson. But I just wanna talk about in the realm of, um, when we see images of mother and child, we see a lot of the two of them like together in, in kind of the visual history of that, right? Um, but we don't usually see like the father, right? In a lot of those images, we don't see kind of the, the paternal figure. And that is usually because the paternal figure is taking the photograph. Like when we look at like images that you find at a secondhand store or, or in family photo albums or whatever, like you, Generally, that is kind of something that the, the father is doing, um, which I think is just such an interesting conversation to have around who is making the images of this, who is, who is kind of um, being the, the documenter of like a traditional stereotypical family unit, right? Which is like not exclusively how a family unit is as a matter of fact, but instead like a way a family can be and, and and so thinking about like who is the documenter for the family, I think is always really interesting. Um, so this image is just such a beautiful one in so many different ways, like this light, the way it's beaming in through into this like relatively stock space too. We have this bed, we don't have sheet, like we don't have like a duvet or a blanket, we have sheets and a pillow. And then this mother and her daughter, um, Eleanor and Barbara just kind of, playing or cuddling or like being very intimate with one another. And so you have this kind of quick and, and private document. And Harry Callahan's work was very much about his, his wife and then later his daughter and their kind of family unit. And I think that that is such a interesting or important subject matter to see through kind of the lens of, of a father or, or a, a paternal figure to see how, how that person would document document their family and their family unit. Um, yeah, and now I'm gonna move to Kenneth Josephson who is doing kind of a similar thing, but the thing about Kenneth Josephson's work is he's very much exploring the materiality and the physicality of a photograph and it as a material object. And a lot of his work uses like photographs of photographs or collages or in some way or another he is like manipulating the photographic image um and so we are given this this piece by him that is is just such like an interesting like we think about the composition of this image like we have a we have the photographer taking a photograph of the child and then we have that photograph of that child like looking at the camera looking at us on top of that image like how much we have like cut out and chunked and I find that just like a really um, interesting use of photography as material, as object. And that's something that Josephson is, is very well known for. And again, like such a different representation of child through like a maternal figure's eyes too. Like we were just talking about with Callahan, like this is such a different way to do that, but also like functions in a similar kind of way of like who is making the image, who is the image of and, and how we kind of engaging in this like documented family. So to move quickly, I want to talk really briefly about some of the artists in our show and to move off of Josephson is such a great artist to kind of move into Carmen Wynette for um, because her work is so much about collage and materiality and physicality of a photograph. So this, this work is called My Birth. Um, it was, it was installed in the MoMA and it is, if you can see this floor to ceiling, like down a hallway, which kind of references like a birth canal kind of thing of all these images of people giving birth and of pregnancy um, in a very like raw and honest way. Like it is not medical or surgical, but instead like these very like intimate family images of people giving birth. Um, and I think that that is, I mean, when, when Wynette talks about this work, like it's such an important thing to have this because we don't ever get to see it. 
and and Wyna in many interviews talks about how she when the show was up was like walking around the moment to kind of like see what people were doing or engaging with I looked at the walk and kind of seeing how they interacted with it and and she noticed well one a lot of um cisgendered men were would just walk with their eyes down and not look at the images and just kind of like walk right out of that space the other thing she talked about the most which I find to be like such a beautiful thing is um older women when they saw this walk would like cry and like just be so overwhelmed because they'd never seen their experiences in a space like this anywhere like they'd never seen pregnancy be just shown in such an honest and absolute kind of way and again like another unflinching representation of that like Winder does not pulling any punches when she shows this work and, and talks about the importance of having this visual record and so like just knowing that the people who got to see this who have experienced birth and have like had children and maybe had multiple children and have never seen their experience shown on a wall in an art gallery in a, in a museum in a movie and whatever like we don't see that and not in the way that a lot of these images are and so I think that that's really this work is just like very pivotal and important because of those things um but just, so this work isn't in our collection but this is a insole shot um, for the show that's currently going up. So it's kind of a fun sneak peek of this is Comet's, Common Wine's new pieces, um, which is called The History of My Pleasure, which is then like another subset of what we're all talking about too. We talk about pregnancy. We talk about like female sexuality. We talk about sexuality in general, but if we're specifically looking at it through the lens of, of a, um, of this kind of like again a lack of history of like female pleasure and female sexuality and 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 how like we don't see that and we don't talk about that and how that really butts up against ideas of pregnancy and ideas of that because images of of pregnant women have not existed for so long because of that just indicated that these women had 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 sex or had had an experience like that and it was like a shameful secret thing whereas now it's kind of going like common thesis going backwards to like reintroduce that history or in like this contemporary sense of this exists this is important this is an element of reproduction and it is an important part of that and it isn't something that needs to be ignored and, and so common uses all these found images to do that um and then i'm gonna really briefly so to go i want to also then talk about krista franklin um, who's also in our show. So these pieces from Under the Knife will also be in our show, um, which is a book that she published a few years ago with Kanda um, that's all about her experience of um, having uh, tumors in her, in her uterus and then having to have an operation to remove those. And it's kind of this, this semi-autobiographical, like, very vulnerable piece of imagery and, and text and poetry that's about her and then also about like her mother and her aunts and this like generational trauma and experience of of having children of of not having children of of having a body that has a uterus and what that is and what that feels like and she also something she talks about when she talks about this work or within this work that that I find really interesting is that she talks about how before she had her operation because of the tumors that she she looked she looked pregnant that she looked like she was was you know, developing a child inside her body, but actually it was this, and it was actually these tumors and something that would deny her that ability or, or change her relationship to that, um, of having biological children. And, and, and she talks about how people like would come up to her and like congratulate her on, on being pregnant and just make an assumption based on the way that she looked. And, and she, and she, you know, quite obviously and quite normally would get upset by that because it is like this assumption and this um, interrogation of what, what we assume a body like that is and what that means. And then also assuming that it is a celebratory experience. And so Franklin is like talking about all these kind of very complicated um, interactions around pregnancy and the way people interact and engage with like a pregnant body or someone who looks pregnant. And then also like, talking about what it means to have a uterus or to have a womb and like how that, how that kind of experience of having that or having an operation that removes that changes your relationship to your body or um, kind of, 
I guess like changes changes your relationship to like what a stereotypical definition of of what someone who can have children is, right? And so I I something I appreciate within Franklin's work, and I think I've said about most of the work in, in this presentation too, is the honesty, the candor, the vulnerability, and this just like very authentic document of of what her experience with her own body was. Um, and so this work and then also Carmen's work will be in, in our show as well as Karuchi's work. Um, and so you have all these like different kind of conversations around, around reproduction and reproductive rights. Um, so that is the end of our presentation. I'm gonna check the chat really quick. Um, Oh yeah, so someone just asked earlier the the Emma Gowan piece um, is yeah it is of someone having a a C section. So again, we have this like different representation of a specific type of birth, right? Um, really quickly. Um, great, 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 cool. Thank you guys. But um yeah, so that that image is of that. Um, which again, I think is then another important element of like talking about pregnancy and like the different ways in which people have children, whether that is a C-section or a home birth or a water birth or at a hospital or all these kind of like different experiences. Um, but yeah, so our show, Reproductive Health Fertility Agency will be open um, from January 19th to May 23rd. It currently isn't, open to the public because of the COVID restrictions, but we will have virtual tours. We have a lot of programming coming up. I'm sorry, I recommend like seeing all of this other material. Um, we have a lot of like artist talks and, and a lot of people in partnership with the exhibition who will be like talking about a lot of these things and other things that we've, I haven't even covered today. We talk about like Road v. Way, or we talk about kind of abortion or all these other things. Um, so, yeah, check out all the additional material as well. Photos at Zoom. Um, we don't know when the next one will be, but for those of you who really enjoy this, keep keep your kind of ears to the ground about when our next presentation will be. Um, and we will uh, we will like have different conversations probably about the next exhibition. Um, yeah, and so the show will someone just off the show will be online. There'll be a video tour of it and some other like virtual material. So you guys will be able to like see the show without like being being in person until we're able to to open to the um to the public. Well, thank you guys so much um, for a really great little talk. Um, I know I think I went over time a little bit, so I appreciate you guys hanging with me for those of you who did. Um, and yeah, check out the show, check out all the additional material and um, and yeah, <laughs> I don't really know how to end a virtual presentation like this, but uh, thank you guys so much. And I hope you get to see the show and enjoy the show. It's amazing. I've been obsessed with it for about a year since we were developing it. So would recommend going to check it out. All right. Thank you guys. I'm gonna pause the recording. <laughs>